this is Teacher Tisa. So welcome to MSA's Upcut Review video series where we discuss questions that you might encounter in the exam. Okay, so before watching this video, you may download the worksheet that can be found at the description below. Okay, so you can assess your knowledge on the subject. So again, don't forget to hit the like button and click subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you'll get updated with our latest video. In this video, we'll be having a review for a general science. Let's start! Key number 1. Which layer of the atmosphere reflects and absorbs radio waves, allowing us to receive radio broadcasts? First, let's take a look at the layers of the atmosphere. Okay, so first we have the troposphere, which is the innermost layer of the atmosphere where weather disturbances occur. And then the next layer, we have the stratosphere, which contains the ozone layer that absorbs UV rays from the sun. Okay, and then we have the mesosphere, which is the coldest layer. And then the thermosphere is the hottest layer due to the absorption of the energetic UV rays and X-rays from the sun. And then we have the exosphere, which is the outermost layer of the atmosphere. Okay, in the atmosphere, we have what they call the ionosphere. Okay, so the ionized layer of the atmosphere is called the ionosphere. It is ionized due to the solar radiation causing to produce a layer of electrons. Okay, so the UV rays from the sun collides with the atoms in this layer causing the electrons to lose. Okay, so the free electrons in this region causes the reflection and absorption of radio waves. Okay, because of that one, ionosphere influences the radio propagation to distant places on Earth. Okay, so the answer for number one will be letter D, ionosphere. Okay, let's have number two. As magma cools, atoms start to arrange themselves into orderly patterns which is called crystallization. So how does the rate of cooling influence crystal size? Okay, so again, so the as magma cools, crystals are forming. Okay, and then the rate of cooling influences the formation of the size of the crystal. Okay, and this number, we can have the process of elimination on our choices. Okay, let's take a look at letters B and C. For letter B, rapid cooling rate results large crystal size. And then for letter C, slow cooling rate results small crystal size. Since both of them indicate the same concept, we can already eliminate them from our choices. Okay, so going back with our discussion, Okay, so if the magma cools slowly, it allows the atom to have enough time to form a larger crystals. And then on the other hand, if cooling occurs rapidly, the atoms are losing their motion and quickly form into smaller crystals. With that, the answer for number two will be letter A. Okay, now let's have number three. So a piece of black has a mass of 0.49 gram and a volume of 12 milliliters. So what is the density of the block in a kilograms per liter? Okay, as we all know that density is the amount of mass per unit of volume. So we will divide a 0.49 gram by 12 milliliters. Okay, but in this number, we are asked to have the density of the block in kilograms per liter. Where that, we will divide, I mean, we will convert the grams into kilograms and then the milliliters into liters. Okay, for the unit conversion, we'll be using dimensional analysis. Okay, to know more about the use of the dimensional analysis, you may check our previous video about the unit conversion using dimensional analysis. Okay, now let's go back to our unit conversion. Okay, we will cancel out the 1000 here and we will also cancel out the grams and milliliters. With that, we are only left with 0 0.49 kilogram divided by 12 liters. Okay, as we can see that from our choices, they are only differ in decimal places. With that, if we will proceed with our division, you can see that a 0 0.04 matches letter D. With that, we are safe to assume that letter D is already the answer without completing the solution so that we will be able to save time. Okay, but then if you want to verify the answer, you will proceed, you may proceed with your calculation and will still give you 0 0.041 as an answer. Okay, so for number three, the answer will be 0 0.041 one kilogram per liter. Okay, now let's have number four. Why are there longer days during summer and shorter days during winter throughout the year? Okay, so the, the days and the nights are due to the Earth's rotation roughly every 24 hours. However, the Earth is not experiencing 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime each day. 
Okay, so the variation of the daylight throughout the year is because of the Earth's axis is tilted 23.5 degrees from the perpendicular to the plane of its orbit, which is called the inclination of the axis. Okay, because of that one, this region, the sun never sets. Okay, at this part of the Earth, it will experience a long day and short night. And then at this part of the Earth, it will have equal day and night and then at this region it will experience short day and long night and then at this region the sun never rises okay because of that one the answer for number four will be letter d okay now let's have number five mid-ocean regions are landforms formed as a result of plate boundary so which statement is true about mid-ocean regions okay so mid-ocean regions are formed along two diverging oceanic plates Okay, so it marks two oceanic plates moving away from each other, which is called the seaplur spreading. Okay, so the magma fueled by the mantle's convection rises to the surface, which powers the separation of the plates, creating a new seafloor. Okay, for the plate boundary, we have the divergent boundaries and we have the convergent boundaries. Okay, so the divergent boundaries, it is when the two plates are moving away from each other. Okay, and here are the landforms that can be formed. On the other hand, when we say convergent boundaries, okay, these are two plates moving towards from each other. Okay, and here are the landforms that can be formed. Okay, so for number five, the answer will be letter A. Mid-ocean regions occur along the diverging plates. Now, let's have number six. Okay, so what are the proper practices for climate change mitigation? Okay, so climate change, it is a long-term change in the average weather patterns. Okay, so in responding to climate change, it involves two approaches. First one is we have the climate change mitigation wherein it encompasses the avoidance and reduction of emissions of heat-trapping greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere to prevent the earth from warming to severe temperatures. Okay, and then the next one we have the climate change adaptation wherein it means addressing the effect of climate change. Okay, it involves reducing the vulnerability to the adverse effects of climate change. Okay, for number six, one and four are both climate change adaptation practices. Okay, they both reduce and address the negative impacts of climate change. And then two and three are climate change mitigation strategies wherein they minimize the possible causes of climate change. Okay, so the answer for number six will be letter C. Okay, now let's have number seven. Okay, what atmospheric phenomenon is formed in warm bodies of water and characterized by sustained low barometric readings? Okay. So, La Nina and monsoons are seasonal atmospheric phenomena, okay? So, we can eliminate La Nina and monsoon in our choices, okay? And then, we have the whirlpool, wherein it is a phenomenon occurring in bodies of water, okay? But not in the atmosphere. So, whirlpool is not our answer, okay? And then, local winds are small-scale weather systems influenced by topography, okay? And then, it is local winds is not also our answer, okay? For number seven, that would be cyclone, okay? How does a cyclone form? Okay, first, warm moist air rises over warm bodies of water, leaving the area with a lower air pressure. Okay, and the next one, as the warm air rises, it condenses to form clouds. Okay, and then the surrounding air is pulled towards the low pressure area, which repeats the step one. Okay, and then the last step, the clouds and the wind rotate as the cycle continues. As it rotates faster, an eye forms at the center with a very low air pressure. Okay, so for number seven, the answer will be letter A. Okay, now let's have number eight. Which of these measurements is not equivalent to 745 one trillion decameter? Okay, first let's convert our given to scientific notation by moving the decimal point after 7 and that will be 7.45 times 10 raised to negative 10 decameter. Okay, and then for metric conversion, we can use this mnemonic. We have the King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk, wherein the first letter corresponds to the prefixes. Okay. And then in metric conversion, if we are converting from left to right, for decimals, we will move the decimal point to the right. And for scientific notation, we will increase the exponent value. And then if we are converting from right to left, for decimals, we will move the decimal point to the left. And for scientific notation, we will decrease the exponent value. Okay, now let's convert our given. Okay, let's convert first decameters to millimeters, wherein we will move the decimal point four places to the right. Okay, and then that would mean that letter A is equivalent to R given. Okay, and then next one, let's convert decameters into its base unit, and that will be one step to the right. 
Okay, with that, letter B is also equivalent to our given. And then letter C, we have the conversion of decameters to centimeters. And that would mean that we will increase the exponent value by 3. Okay, and then letter C is also equivalent to our given. Okay, next, let's convert the decameters to decimeters. And that would mean that we will increase the exponent value by 2. As you can see, that letter D is not similar to our supposed D answer. With that, letter D is not equivalent to our given. Okay, that would mean that we don't need to convert the decameters to kilometers, okay, so that we will be able to save time. Okay, with that, the answer for number 8 is letter D. Okay, now let's have number 9. Okay, so why are renewable resources take a small part of the energy consumption? Okay, so renewable resources come from natural sources that are continually replenished in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so we have the solar energy, wind energy, and more. Okay, so the benefits of utilizing renewable resources includes climate change mitigation, energy supply sustainability, and free and unlimited resources. However, the expenses of constructions and installment of such technology are costly. Okay, its capital cost is more expensive than the non-renewable. Okay, so that would mean that for number 9, the answer will be letter D. Electricity from renewable resources are costlier to produce than electricity from fossil fuels. Okay, so now let's have a number 10. Yachi is viewing at an angle rather than straight on when reading the volume of a substance in a graduated cylinder. As a result, she consistently reads the graduated cylinder in a way that reflects that angle. So what type of error did Yachi commit? Okay, so Yachi's eyes are being positioned at an angle to the measurement instead of straight on. Okay, so all of her measurements are prone to be either higher or lower than the true value. Okay, so with that, Yachi's error is an example of observational error wherein the observer is incorrectly reading the measurement also known as the parallax error. Okay, so systematic errors consistently produce measurements that are either too high or too low. Okay, so the answer for number 10 will be letter C. Okay, to know more about errors and uncertainties, you can check our video about it. Okay, now let's have number 11, the last number. Okay which correctly describes a light year and an astronomical unit, respectively. Okay, so remember that light year, it is a unit of length which is defined as the distance light travels in a year. Okay, and then on the other hand, astronomical unit, it is a unit of length which is defined as the average distance of Earth to the sun. Okay, so for number 11, the answer will be letter D. Okay, now did you get all the correct answers? Well, if you did, a good job everyone. So, how was the exercise? Did you get correct answers? Well, if you did, good job everyone! Okay? If you want to have a more in-depth discussion and additional exercises, you may enroll in our UPTAC review or College Entrance Test Preparation Program. Okay? For more information, you may visit us on our website, which is the msainstitute.com, or you may visit us on our Facebook page, which is the MSA Academic Advancement Institute. Okay? So I guess that's all for today. Thank you for listening and MC will see you on our next video. Bye!